my dear divayvani viewers welcome to the word of god program In the last couple of weeks i shared with you some thoughts about the book of exodus i introduced the book i gave a certain amount of the background and showed how the book of exodus really narrates the god experience of the israelites and because of that god experience this book in the old testament is in a way unique unique because the relationship between yahweh and the people of israel was concretized established and that gave the israelites a new life a new light the history of israel in this way becomes a very special one today i would like to once again repeat most of what i already shared with you in a different angle so that you will have the background in your mind which will enable you especially when you read the book of exodus to once again understand deeply and realize what happened in those days i start with the historical dimension of the exodus the biblical account actually does not give us a clear historical detail and in our modern sense of the term we cannot take that as a historical narration but from all the other sources put together we are able to more or less reconstruct and arrive at even the dating of the exodus events the exodus most authorities agree that it took place in the 13th century bc it took place during the rule of ramesses the second who was the great builder of the new kingdom who ruled egypt from 1290 to tol 24 bc so the events of the exodus took place during those years and because of those years were really years of construction for which the israelites were used almost as slaves that is seen as the oppression the israelites had to suffer the first chapter of exodus chapter 1 verses 11 gives a very brief but meaningful introduction to the whole event i quote therefore they set task masters over them to oppress them with the forced labor they built supply cities pithom and ramesses for pharaoh this is in exodus chapter 1 verse 11 it is known that ramesses the second set up his capital in the northeast corner of the nile delta and that the term city of ramesses was not used after 1100 bc so from this we more or less certainly conclude that all those events narrated in the book of exodus took place during those years during, during the reign of ramesses the second there are different opinions i do agree especially that even ramesses the second 
led all these but there are other conclusions from other evidences that the exodus took place in the 15th century BC but most of the experts agree on this this dating and that I think is really to be accepted. The other reason for saying that all this took place later, earlier in the 15th century is a text again in Exodus chapter 2 verse 23 to 25. I quote, after a long time the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under the, their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites and God took notice of them. This led to the experts to arrive at another dating. Whatever it is, it is important to more or less historically arrive at a certain dating regarding this whole event. The event that actually changed the history of Israel as well as the history of Egypt. And we abide by this 13th century event and that will be the basis for us. It's not very important that we have the correct dating, but the correct dating more or less will give us a certain dimension which will be helpful in interpreting and understanding the events. The Exodus itself must have taken place again during the reign of Ramesses II. The secular history of Egypt does not give much of the events of those times. The reason is they would like to show Pharaoh as a divine ruler, show the majesty and greatness of Pharaoh and in the face of all those events, especially the plagues and the way Moses dealt with all that gives no special honor to the Pharaoh and that may be the reason why the secular writers gave very little details of those events in the secular history. Whatever be the reason, all that we know from the secular history and all that we can conclude about the events is what I just said, that this these events took place more or less in the 13th century BC. The Egyptian texts are practically silent about what happened during those days, those years. The exodus for them must have been something so painful and therefore they gave very little importance to that part. For us, the Exodus must be a basis for understanding the faith experience of the Israelites. All those events and all those narrations are mainly to tell us what they experienced as God's intervention. God's intervention and man's understanding of those events. That the Exodus was a going out from Egypt is easy enough. 
but that was at the heart of the Israelites' faith experience. It was a going out, yes, but it was not only just a going out, it was a choice. God acted on behalf of Israel in a significant way because God intervened in the history, in the life of the Egyptians and the Israelites. It was not like any other narrations of God's intervention. This God, Yahweh, intervened in the lives of those people in real time, in real situation. God intervened into the life of those people and it was nothing of a mythical nature. It was all real. Israel's God Yahweh dramatically entered the arena of real time and real people. And that made the Israelites understand God's action for them. Even the introduction to the Decalogue puts it, we will have a short break, we'll come back in a short while. Thank you.